class, we now begin a chapter on genetics, a topic that I think you'll find interesting. Uh, the main points of this chapter will be that inherited traits are determined by genetics, genes code for the expression of proteins, and all living things use the same genetic code. And we'll talk about a, several topics related to genetics. Um, by the way, in this uh, opening slide, you can see uh, the structure of DNA. And also you see in the left the re representation of the 23 pairs of human chromosomes. Now, some of the topics that we will cover in this chapter are uh, Gregor Mendel and classical genetics. We'll cover that mostly in this uh, first video lecture. Then we'll talk about DNA and modern molecular genetics. <clears throat> then we'll talk about the genetic code and, again, some related topics, including uh, viruses. Uh, genetics is, uh, is usually a topic of interest to people, especially people of college age, because you're always thinking, and I'm, I did when I was young, what would my children look like if I got married? Uh, would they have dark hair and brown eyes? Would they have dimples? Things of that sort. Because there are a number of, of human traits that we oftentimes think of, and this slide shows some, and it shows some traits that are dominant and recessive, which we'll get into in this, uh, in this uh, video lecture. But such things as the general shape of the face, oval or square, whether or not you have a cleft in your chin, whether or not your hair is curly or straight, or if your hairline has what is called a widow's peak or, or not, uh, your eye color, brown versus uh, gray and green and hazel and blue. Um, whether or not there's hair on the uh, the middle uh, joint of your of your finger, uh, hair color, dark versus blonde and red. Whether or not you have dimples or your blood type, like A or O or B blood types. Some of these are dominant genes and some are recessive genes, and we'll see shortly what that means. Let's go back and talk about Gregor Mendel, this Austrian monk uh, who did some very important studies that's, that led to our understanding of how we inherit various traits. That is, Gregor Mendel gave us the basic laws of inheritance, and he did this by studying, of all things, pea plants. He studied the height that the plant grew to. He studied the shape and color of the, of the pods and the, and the shape and the color of, of the peas themselves. And his work was noted by how carefully he performed all of his experiments. Now, Gregor Mendel was actually lived at about the same time as Charles Darwin. And uh, he was influenced a bit by reading Darwin's work. But whereas Darwin did most of his studies by ob ob observing uh, life, life forms, Mendel did a direct experimentation with these pea plants. To give you an example of what we're talking about, Mendel had available to him uh, some plants that were tall pea plants and short pea plants. And the thought prior to Mendel was that, well, if you, if you, breed, if you were to breed these plants together, you would get something in between in height. Well, he did that, and he found that in this first generation of cross-pollination of these tall and short pea plants, he got only tall plants, only tall plants. Hmm, that was what you would call the F1 generation, the first generation. Then he continued to look at the next generation of plants produced by, this, by the F1 generation, what we call the F2 generation, or the grandchildren. And there he found, surprisingly, that the short plant reappeared. The short plant would, did not exist in the first generation, the children, but in the grandchildren, the short plant uh, appeared again. And it appeared in a ratio of one short plant to three tall plants, exactly in that ratio of three to one. And of course, he did a lot of experimentation and collected a lot of, uh, lot of data to demonstrate that this ratio was an exact ratio. Besides the height of pea plants, he also studied the traits of whether or not they were round or wrinkled. And this is shown in this slide, where you see a round or a smooth P and a wrinkled P. 
And we'll get a little bit ahead of ourselves and say that, let's say that the round or smooth P has characteristics that we'll call SS for smooth, capital SS, whereas the wrinkled we'll call lowercase s, two of them, SS. And again, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, that's because each P plant has two genes for this characteristic of being smooth around. One of the genes is a would be a dominant gene, and one the recessiveness, perhaps. And the two genes are because things are diploid. Remember, we talked about being diploid. That is, there are two chromosomes or two genes for this characteristic, one inherited from the father, one inherited from the mother plant. So that if you had two capital S, then you would be a smooth plant. If you had two lowercase s, then you would be a wrinkled uh, plant, wrinkled P. But if you had one uppercase s and one lowercase s, as shown in this first generation, it turned out that the uppercase s was a dominant gene. And that led to the smooth looking P, even though that P still contained a recessive gene, a recessive lowercase uh, gene. So this means that one gene, the capital S, can dominate or be a dominant gene over the lowercase, the smaller lowercase s uh, gene. A way for us to understand why this leads to that three to one ratio is through what we call Punit squares. So let's say that in the F2 generation, that is the grandchildren generation, or the parent plant would have had an uppercase S and a lowercase S genes, that we would have four possible combinations of genes if we allowed those plants to continue to produce offspring. That is, we could have cases where the F2 generation would have two of the dominant uppercase S smooth gene or one of the uppercase smooth gene and one of the lowercase wrinkle genes or the possibility that the P would have two of the recessive lowercase s genes. But that would only happen one out of the four times. So that you would expect the ratio if the capital S, the smooth gene was a dominant gene, you would expect to have three times as many of the smooth P's as the wrinkled peas. Mendel studied other plants as well, and, and he studied many generations of these pea plants to come up with this model for the inheritance of traits based on the fact that there are dominant and recessive genes. So the rules of classical genetics uh, revealed to us by the studies of, of Mendel, one, Traits are passed from parent to offspring via what we call genes. Two, there are two genes associated with each trait, one gene coming from the, each parent, one from the father and one from the mother. Three, there are dominant and recessive genes, and the dominant gene controls whether or not the trait is expressed. Now, I'd like for you to watch this uh, YouTube video about Gregor Mendel. Here's the link, and I'll post this in Blackboard as well. And as you watch this video, I'd like for you to consider the following questions, and we'll discuss some of these questions when we are together in, uh, in either class or Zoom. Did Mendel do his experiments on a farm or on a, on a monastery? Uh, what was Mendel's initial inspiration for, for doing science? Uh, approximately how many plants did uh, Mendel do uh, use in his experimentation? What kind of plants? And I kind of gave it away already, pea plants. Why does the wrinkled phenotype not show up in the first generation after breeding? Now, phenotype means how it looks, whether or not it looks wrinkled or looks smooth. Were people excited when Mendel presented his results? And six, did Mendel continue a career in research uh, until his death, or what else did he do in his life? So we'll pause, and we'll uh, continue again, and in our next video lesson, we'll talk about what we call the central dogma of gene expression, or the central dogma of molecular biology. Okay? So see you in a while. Watch the video, video on Gregor Mendel. It's kind of cheeky, but I think you'll like it.